Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. And hey look, I've got another one of these to fix. This is from Power Sound. I've done some repairs for Power Sound in the past. I've repaired one of these in the past, but I don't know if this is actually the same one I repaired because they have quite a lot of this equipment. So they rent out to people, they sell to people, they service. So they've probably got quite a number of these. The customer brought it in and he basically not speaking a lot of English and I speak in uh, Perco Espanol and uh, figured out really that effectively what he's saying is that um, it was working and then it went <coughs> I think that was how he put it <coughs> yeah and smoke came out of it so that's the description of the problem with it normally with these sort of things you know I put them on my light bulb current limiting thingy my current limiter yeah and um, see what they do but because I know full well that smoke came out of this one I'm not going to do that first I'm actually going to open it up and have a look to see what I can see inside it what evidence there is yeah okay I've got these screws out of it let's have a look yeah these things are a bit fiddly because the cables here are quite short somebody smells of burning in here yeah let's have a look so i'll take the cables off this i can see in fact i think you can see already here yeah something's frazzled itself okay Okay, I think you can see the charred remains of up into here, but I think this is just effectively, yeah, charcoal. That'll probably just clean up. So something is very much burnt out here. Looks like it's around the power supply area. Let's have a look. So under here is the heat sink and the main power transistors are under here. I think this is a different one to the one I had previously. I think the sticker was worn off on the other one or something like that. We'd have to go back and look at the old videos because there's one of these in there somewhere. Okay, there we go. Keep all the screws safe. This is the one I've looked at before, I think because I made, yes, this is definitely the one I looked at before because I put the writing on the boards here to tell me which wire went where. Okay, so it's been out there for some months since we made the last video let's get this thing out of the way and it's blown up let's zoom down and have a look yeah yep there you have it guys looks like a lot of burnt resistors down here so we need to figure out what's caused this this is power coming in from the transformer uh, these are the bridge rectifiers, which are the main power to the main amplifier. I remember what was wrong with this. Now there was an open circuit track up under here. So we had no input coming from the mixer down under here. We had, we had a, a broken track. I remember it now. So this is a completely different problem with it. I think we're going to have to, well, we're going to have to take this board out so we can have a good look at it. I'm interested just to know if there's any shorts on the main supply rails before I dismantle it. So let's have a quick look. So this is a class G amplifier like the previous video if you've watched it. 
um, which is quite common for anything you know like 500 watts of channel and more so we actually have one two three four power rails here and they're marked so we have um, left low voltage left high voltage it's like the 45 and 90 or whatever they were we have right high and right low so let's get these shorts from here to ground ground is well ground is where ground is which is probably uh, let's use the chassis for now okay let's have a loop so there's no no shorts on that one I'm not sure I have a good ground actually. Is the black on ground? It may even be marked. No, that says high voltage or HV minus. Doesn't actually say ground. They are these green ones. These were all ground, I think. I think these were all ground. All these green ones. Yeah, they go to the chassis as well, actually. So this probably does actually connect to the chassis. Yeah, it does. We can say that's ground. So let's have another look. So I put it into ohms range. So that's high. That's high. That's high. This one. Yeah, all high resistance, no shorts there. I can't read on these, these go straight to the transformer, so this is AC coming in. It looks like this is probably, it's obviously part of the power supply circuit for something. So, whatever it is, it's certainly not the power supply for these, that's, that's all these capacitors and these bridge rectifiers. There's two more capacitors here, and without taking the board out, which I'll have to do, there's probably two voltage regulators here, probably plus and minus 15. That would be normal. So this looks like it's a supply to something else. Okay, let's get this board out, and then let's have a look to see what's happened. I have the PCB out, so... Yeah, it looks pretty bad. I mean, that's the other side of the board. So it looks like we probably have some PCB damage as well as some burnt resistors. And we need to figure out what caused this to happen. The first thing then is going to be to clean this off. I'll try isopropyl first and let's see if we can get a better idea of what's gone wrong. Oh, just a quick mention, guys. I'm still playing around with the audio compressor, so if the audio sounds a lot different now than the first five minutes of the video, I hope it sounds better. Yeah. In the meantime, I also cleaned this. So I used the isopropyl alcohol, and I've now got all the charcoal off. But you can see it is quite badly damaged. So if I put a uh, torch underneath it, yeah, look, there's a hole in the PCB there, yeah. This is a double-sided board. Let's have a look at that damage under the microscope as well. Okay, we can see it much more clearly now. So, obviously, this is a track from here, which went to there. It looks like there's a track that also comes across here, but maybe went to something here, I would imagine. Probably not to there, otherwise this would be kind of all filled in with track, I would have thought. So yeah, it looks like there's something here and that went to this one and this goes up here to here. So what we need to do now is to remove the components, the burnt ones, and then let's see what we're left with. This side tells much the same story then. So there's quite clearly, these are wire wound resistors or they were. This is turned into a kind of a molten blob between the two. This capacitor has obviously been a little bit uh, distressed by the heat. So I'm guessing we need to change that as well. In fact, I'll probably change all three because the others may have been degraded as well, actually. So these are the three components I'm going to have to take off the board. And then let's see what we have. If it's something we can repair. Obviously, we'll need some flux to do this. I've put a bit of flux on the job. 
these are the parts I want to take out. This looks like it's just gone all together, hole on the board there. Let's um, see what we can do. Okay, well, at least, at least I'm getting some solder onto them. I'm hoping to push these actually into the board or through the board. I think they're actually going. Not that one. Let's get a bit of braid as well. See if that helps. Okay. Yeah, the ends of the components actually bent over slightly, that's why they wouldn't push in. Okay, so this one is effectively lifting up. Yeah, other one wants a bit of fresh solder again, let's have another go. Okay. This one's a little bit tricky. I've lifted it up. I think I've lifted part of the pad with it, but that was probably always going to happen, to be quite honest. Okay. Let's see if we can get this end of these out. It's double sided, so I should be able to actually get some heating from this side as well. I'll get some focus on it. Yeah, these have now effectively come out of the board. That one has, this one's still molten. That's kind of like stuck to that one. So we need to unsolder that as well, which is this one. I think it's here or here. Okay. Well, it's desoldering. It looks like this will actually lift up again. The pads come away from the board. I'll try and leave them in place as best I can. Nice smell of charred PCB as I'm doing this. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, so I've obviously unsoldered that one. The one I want is kind of in between, which is here. Let's see if we can do it from this side of the board. And get this underneath it. Yeah. That is out. Okay, so those are all lifted up at this end and now it's the other end and I think I'll actually try to do them again from this side. They're coming loose, they're just moving. Okay. Well that just came out, took the one with it, they stuck to each other. And that one's out and I guess we may as well have at least this first capacitor out as well I can see which way round it goes the uh, negative goes towards this side and I can actually read the value 33 microfarad 35 volts so if that's in this circuit this wasn't a high voltage supply I think this will just actually pull out of the board With a bit of luck, I think it might be here. And it's not that one, it's up here somewhere, maybe in under here. Not there. Ah, that's one leg of it, and I'm guessing this is the other leg here. Yeah, 
so that's where the capacitor goes okay let's now try to clean it up again and see what we have That's fairly clean, so we can now have a look at the extent of the damage under the microscope again. And let's have a look at those components we removed at the same time. Well, this is one of the resistors. We can see it's a resistor because we can see the end caps. And I think I can kind of see where the winding of it was as well. So that effectively is the remains of one of the resistors. So I turn it over. yeah you can see it so that's one of them let's have a look at the others these are the two components that fuse to each other this one is clearly a resistor you can see where the track was in it and the other one well i'm not sure it could also be a resistor it has like end caps on it but it's become effective like a molten mass, really, that one. Yeah. And the capacitor. Well, there we go. So this didn't actually blow, but it was obviously... It wants to roll away. It was obviously burned somewhat by the actual heat of the other things that actually went. So let me have that as well. And this we can actually see the value. If I just get it. Yeah, 33 microfarad, 35 volts. This is probably a 25 volt supply rail. Here is our damaged PCB. We can fairly clearly see that there were some tracks on this side of the board as well. Yeah, this is part of a track which looks like it went somewhere into there. There's a bit of track here, it looks like a track came here. Yeah, this one here as well. So obviously a lot of current passed through here. So there must be, or must have been, a short somewhere to cause this amount of damage. Uh, there may have been more on here, there's nothing left much. To repair this, we're going to have to do a few things. We need to figure out first what these missing components are. And it's all charcoal here, but there were three components. And fortunately, I have a schematic from this. Without a schematic, this would be very difficult to repair, I would say. So we can see that the damage is in this area around IC2 and IC1. We have C19, we have C20, which is the one I removed. So let's have a look on the schematic at this area and try to figure out what might have happened to it. And then from that, hopefully we can work out what components are missing. Here is the schematic and this page is the amplifier power supply unit circuit, which is basically what we have. And we can see here we have IC2, IC1, IC1B, IC2B. So each one is effectively a dual op amp in fact this is a dual op amp 4560 and this one is an lm393 which is a dual comparator and this circuit seems to be part of the thermal control oh in fact it's part of the fan controls so we have the fan connections here we can see it has a plus 17 volt and minus 17 volt supply in this area which ties in very well with a 35 volt capacitor we found so we can see ic1 and ic2 we know what area of the circuit we're in 
Now we need to figure out which components are actually burnt up. Fortunately, we have a little bit of a clue to help us here. So we can see that the resistor that was here is R1 something. So that could be R1 or it could be R10 to R19. There's no three digit numbers in the area. So I don't think it's going to be anything higher than R19, like R100, for example. The best way to figure out what's missing, this is my method, I'm sure there's others, is by the process of elimination. So this is going to be R1 or it's going to be R10, R11 up to R19. So if I make a list of all those resistors and then figure out which ones are present, like a roll call, the ones that are missing is here, yeah? And the chances are they're all consecutive numbers. I can see R20 here. Uh, can we see? Yeah, there's R21. There's an R22, yeah, 24. So the chances are, because they are present, I'm guessing 23 is also around here somewhere, but I'll just bear in mind I didn't find it yet. Who's shouting at the screen? So the chances are they are somewhere in the R1 or and I doubt it's R1, that's probably elsewhere. It's probably between R10 and R19. Right, let's make a list of the numbers. And then let's tick off all the ones that we actually have. And then we can look at the list. So, R10, what, what, what can we see? Right, I've got R13. So I'll make a note of that one. And 15, okay. So 13 and 15 are present. And 14, okay. So I'll make a note of those first. Okay, and then we have 13, 15, 14, 17. Okay, making it 17. 11. Yeah, that's all 11. So we've got 11. So we're looking for 10, 12, 16, 18, and 19. Well, there's 12. So we've got 12. So 10. Can we see 10? Or any of the high numbered ones. Well, there's our 10. I've got that one. So that gives us now 16, 18, and 19. And the possibility of our one. Can I see those? Oh, there's our one. Yeah, so we got our one. We can discount that one. Okay, after a good look around, I don't see R16, 18 or 19, okay? So, now let's have a go on the schematic and find those resistors. And then, let's see what they would connect to and figure out whether we have any tracks going into this area from, from the components that they would connect to, yeah? It's like Sherlock this, yeah? A bit of detective work. Okay, well, 18 and 19 are here, so we can see one end of each connects together, goes to the point A, which is somewhere, goes to one of the inputs on IC2, then one end goes to 17 and one end goes to 0, so that's those ones. Let's see if we can find that area of the circuit, what may also be connected to it. Well... I can see here R29 and R30. In fact, these two circuits are basically identical left channel and right channel. So that should give us a good idea. Yeah, if we can find 20 and 29 and 30, then we can see how 19 and 18 are related to that. Okay, let's have a look. Let's put the information we have to the test then. So this is our... 29 and 30. Now, the two resistors are in series, so one end of one should connect to the one end of the other one. Not there. Yeah, there. So that's the junction between the two resistors. And this goes to one of the inputs on the op amp. It's op amp B inside, so you've got A and B. So normally this is input to op amp 1 inverting non-inverting 
this is the output, this is op amp B, inverting, non-inverting, this is the output, this will be the positive supply, this will be ground. So this point on the resistor should go to one of these inputs. Yes, that one. Okay. So according to the schematic, one of these resistors goes to ground and the other one goes to plus 17. So, well, plus 17 will be the power to this op amp, for sure. Yeah, it is. So that's the plus 17 rail, and that goes to this resistor. And then the other end of the other one will go to ground. It's on the ground chassis point. Yes, it does. So in that case, the other two resistors, which were in here, one end will go to ground, one will go to plus 17, and the other two will be connected together and come back to the other inputs on this chip, pins one or two. So let's have a look. So we know that's ground. Is that here? Is that where the, yeah, Luke, that's where the resistor was. So that's ground. Does it go to here as well? I just wonder if I actually... No, it doesn't go to there, but it goes to there. So that's ground. That's connected to here. The plus 17 there is probably here. And this must be the end of the other resistor. So the opposite end of these, which would have been over here, would be two of them connected together. Well, this is all gone. Uh, but notice there's a slot there. That's where the track was between the two. Where I've got my thing in the hole. Uh, looks like it, because it's in line with these. And that would then come back to here, which obviously it doesn't because it's gone. But we can say I'm pretty certain that's where those resistors were and they are 18 and 19. Let's refer back to the schematic. 18 and 19. Yeah. Come back to this chip. They also go to test point five. I might be able to find that. And somewhere called A also goes from here. One end goes to zero, one goes to 17. And we know these resistors are missing on the roll call, so they must be the two that were burnt up. Well, that means we can actually replace these because we, can, we know where we can find 0 volts. We know where we can find 17. We can get a connection across to here. We can find the end of C20, for example, and we can make this circuit back up. And we can also have a look to see where A goes to. Yeah, A is here. Yeah, another resistor. Okay, so that we can fix. So the other missing resistor looked like it was going to be R16 because I can't find R16 anywhere. But R16 is here. So one end of it would go to pin one on the LM393. That's IC1. So pin one on there. We would go to R17, 1K. And we go to R16. The other end would go to 17 volts. So let's see if we can find this. Okay, so pin one, IC1. R17, R16. Well, this is pin 1 of IC1. I think I might actually have to take this off the microscope so I can see a little bit more of the board for a moment. That might be a bit easier with this. So, R17 we need to find. Well, R17 is here. So, one end of this will go to pin 1. Not that end, the other end. That's not R17, it's this one, sorry. R17. It's not that end, must be the other end. So that goes to there. And then there's a track that comes off under here somewhere. There's some other... Yeah, r is also connected that circuit. And it looks from there, that's when it goes into here. Well, so But we can see where it should go without having to fix this bit. We can figure out, we know where 17 volts plus is. It's there. So we can connect the component. We know where it goes to. So we can fix that one, and that must be the other missing one. So what's going on then around here? There's something else that's blown here, yeah? Let's look at this bit. Okay, so these couple of tracks go into C19, that's here. 
Looks like one of them goes to the actual capacitor. Or is it, or is it go underneath it? Okay, I can see it now. Yeah, so the one goes to the positive end of the capacitor, and the other one actually goes underneath it and comes up in this direction somewhere. It also appears that the current came this way as well, because this is all burnt. I think this probably goes to this capacitor, actually. That's here. I mean, C20 we know about. We removed it. We can make sure that the pads are going to the right place. We have the schematic, no problem. What's happened under here? I think I'll remove this one as well now. And we can have a quick look underneath that. C24. Well, we can see now I've removed C24. That track actually went underneath the capacitor. It goes under the resistor. Where does it go to? Oh, it goes up some power resistors over here. Okay, so those are low value power resistors. So it goes to R38. I'll, I'll bet these are the supply rails coming in. We can have a quick look, actually. And there they are. This is almost certainly the plus and minus 17 volt supply. And then we'll go to the op amp on pins 8 and pin 4. So, let's have a look. Just go to here. This is a guess. No, it doesn't directly go to there. Okay, it was just a guess. It isn't correct this time. But we can see here from... R38 comes down to the burnt track here. Put that connection on it. Okay. So that's where that goes. We can have a quick look again on the schematic and see where these are. Okay, so R38 and R39 are here. And these are actually auxiliary plus and minus 95 volt supplies. Now, the area of the circuit we've been looking at is all powered on the 17 volts. So it looks like there's a track coming from the negative here through R38 going past the capacitor that I've just removed. And that's possibly the other end of the track that disappears under the LM393. Let's have a look. So we can see that the resistor here, R38, comes down to here. Yeah, and that track is obviously burnt. And it goes off this way. And I suspect it's the one that we couldn't trace that goes here underneath the capacitor and then disappears down under here and it heads off somewhere. So it is looking now quite likely that this high voltage rail is where the fault was and it's effectively burnt that track because you see it's come along here which is set fire to these resistors and the other reason i suspect that is these are all high value resistors connected to op amps there's no high current in this area i'm wondering if some liquids got inside the down via the through the sliders of the mixers you've knocked some liquid off or knocked some liquid over somewhere it's gone down in here that's possible so to figure out where that goes i need to remove this ic but i've got to do that anyway so let's get the ic out this is the ic i've just added a little bit of wedded solder to it so first of all i'll just clean that off with solder braid that's mixed with leaded and lead free I'll then add some fresh leaded salt and I'll use the vacuum dissolving tool to get the thing out. I mean, the other option is just to cut all the legs off because I'm going to change it anyway. And that obviously would not damage the PCB, but I'll probably be able to get this out in one piece, to be honest. Just come across there. Uh, one more. So that's got rid of the alloy formed by the leaded and lead free solder, which tends to clog up my vacuum desoldering tool. I'm now going to put fresh leaded solder in and I'm going to try to desolder it. If this doesn't work, I'll use the hot air as well. Yeah, running clear. 
Let's have a go. Yeah, I think that came out. Okay. Again, just put the cleaning tool through it. Yep, slightly clogged, I thought it had. These things are extremely useful, but you have to make sure you keep it clear, yeah? Okay, got a little more leaded solder. One more. I think maybe the first two are not quite clear. Just put a bit of leaded solder in. Okay. And this one I think is not quite clear. Okay, I think that'll come out now. Once again, just clean it before you put it on one side. Yeah, look after this tool and it'll do you good service, yeah. Okay. Pull a bit of air through it. Right, switch that off now, noise gone. So this should be clear. That's the theory. In actual fact it isn't, it's, it's not dissolved all the way through the holes, okay. Sometimes this happens, well I'll use a bit of hot air with it as well, and then this should come out, yeah. If you try to remove this, now you're likely to just rip the traps off the board, okay. One more attempt. If you don't have the vacuum tool, you're far better just cutting all the legs off the IC and pulling the pins out individually. which we might end up doing. Okay. Bit of hot air this time. But I'll warm the other side as well so I can get some heat through the board, yeah. Not too much because of the capacitors by here, but just get a bit of heat into it, okay. Let's try again. Now let's see if it will come out, okay? No, it still doesn't want to give it up. So, the other method, and especially if you're going to change the thing anyway, and this is far better for the PCB, is just cut all the pins off the IC, all the ones that are stuck. And then just remove them. Yeah, it looks brutal, but if you're going to throw the thing away anyway, the chip, then I'll... It's far better for the bull, yeah. Okay. Now that's out of the way. 
these should come out easily okay Yeah, they're just coming out now. This is actually a very good technique. Whether you've, if you've not seen it before, you might be a bit shocked by it. But at the end of the day, the PCB is far more important than the chip. In most cases. Okay, they're out. One more here. Once you get all the legs out like that, it's very easy then to just clear the holes. If you like, you can put a little bit more leaded solder, especially on the ones that are clogged. That one. That's it's probably worth just doing all of them. And once again, the vacuum tool or oh, solder braid now. You see that comes nice and clean now. Yeah, there you go guys. I've removed the capacitor and I think we can start to see the full extent of the damage here now. So this is obviously water damage, this rust, yeah, that's definitely what it is. This track goes off over here. Now there's a track from the end of the capacitor here and just uncurl it, it's kind of like curled over, I'll try to. But I think that track is the one that goes up here actually and we can soon figure out because we know what this component is okay so this looks like to me sorry I had to go and do that using my binocular optical microscope this is actually the hand on star I'm using for examination because it gives a better picture on the camera basically but when it comes down to working you really need the optical microscope so yeah that track clearly went that way and we know where it comes from this one is obviously corroded and let's follow it so it goes under there and you can see again evidence of liquid damage here that then goes under this capacitor or by the side of it let's have a quick look if you can see yeah it's kind of like there's there's three tracks here okay that one goes to there it's obviously the third one there's one here as well by the looks of it that circuit board there's a trace here i may have to lift the components to say exactly so where's this one going to this is the one that's we're interested in the top one okay well it goes there it's that one because the bottom one goes to here the second one comes under and the third one comes under so it's now the top one again more evidence of liquid damage or the thing has got hot goes under here then comes off under these three yeah you see where it's going now it goes under here and again there's more liquid damage you can see there yeah And then, well, more liquid damage. It's one of these two. Disappears off under here. 
and it goes under this this is the uh, one of the cable connectors that goes to one of the other boards and that's where that appears to go to it's a little bit hard to say I mean this might be difficult to unsolder but I may have to do to figure out which one it actually is let's even just scratch into the trace a little bit and just figure it out okay so we can clearly see it's this one that I'm interested in we got a little bit of copper there so that goes down and I'm pretty sure it's coming out here if it isn't just corroded all the way through okay let's have a look meter had gone asleep looks like I've gone asleep as well actually okay I've woke back up again so from here let's see if we can get some connection to it yeah that's the track all right goes off over here comes down to here we have a connection to there so let's go from here and work our way around so that's where the track is it's obviously the one that goes under these resistors comes down here behind here and actually comes underneath this capacitor uh, and there's another bad one next to it so it looks like that's the one we want okay let's have a look Well, if it's that one, I don't have a connection to it. From there, yeah. Shoot, it goes under here. Shoot, it goes under here. Oh, it looks like it might not be that one. I think there's another one coming from somewhere else. I think it's actually the second one, which is this one. Okay. So if we just get into it here, a little bit of copper. Okay, let's do that one. Is that the one? Well, let's see. No, we don't have continuity to there. We don't have continuity to there. Okay. I think it's this one. Let's just see. No, it's not that one. Is it this one? No, it's not that one. So if it says if it says top one, we lose it underneath here somewhere. But again, there's a heavy corrosion in the area. We need to take that out to find out. And then we're definitely picking up two bad tracks here. And on it goes. And I'm pretty confident we need to take this off as well. What I have to do now is to lift one end of these so I can see what's happening underneath. This is where the bad tracks are. And just follow that track along. And I'm just going to lift one end of all the components. It passes under so we can actually trace this to see where it's going. This is possibly going to be easier from the top of the board. It'll just depend. Some of them might be easy this way. Some of them might be easy from the other side. But let's try it. So we'll get some leaded solder onto the components I actually want to lift. Okay. Because it's a double sided board and I have effectively solder on both sides, this may be easier. So what we do is this is like a little hook shaped thing. In fact, I think I'll use this end of it. Okay. And just try to lift these components out at one end so let's see you may find you end up breaking them doing this 
Yeah, that one's not coming easily. Try this one. Yeah, that one came out easily enough. Okay, let's have a go at this one again. Let's get a little hook underneath. Some heat into it. I'm hopeful it just left out. Yeah, came that time. This is often easier because you can actually see where you are on the board rather than going to the other side of it and figuring out what's what. Okay, so it goes under there. Then it goes under this one. You could take them out, but then you have to make a note of what goes where. Okay, we have a schematic. But this is probably an easy way to do it. And you don't really need to take them out. Okay, so now you've seen how I'm doing it. I'll just uh, pause the video. I'll go all the way along with all the components. And then we can see what this is doing. So this is the 90 volt minus supply. You can see there's damage actually here. So this liquid damage is actually more in more extensive the more I look at this that's where it goes into the bit that was burnt okay so it disappears in there and we have two tracks here now one of them clearly went that way and we know this is C19 and we actually know that should go to this IC so we can basically see where that goes these ends of these resistors we know about heading this way three of them we know where they went to and we know where the other end of the resistors which were actually connected together goes back to the IC so really I think the only thing missing is the track that was running across here and that's this one so it takes a bit of a dog leg and then goes off under here I've lifted these you can see more corrosion and damage down here if I can just get onto it yeah more damage it looks like I have a blob of solder there get that out of the way I need to order some more tweezers I will do that today so it then comes down here this is another place where we looked at it yeah you see the copper and we didn't have any continuity then it runs along here and from here it goes down this way okay across here again this is where I was checking for continuity I didn't have it you can see a lot of rust here okay under here under this lot and that disappears underneath this socket and this is the socket where I had the fault last time I repaired, repaired this on the last repair and that was this wire okay which you can see here which basically was causing one channel to have no audio and one end of it went to the connector at the end and this is where I had to replace it basically by this socket yeah so I really need to take this socket off the board you can see where the damage is you can see the other side of it now there's a bad track running along here so there's obviously been liquid in this the more I look at it the more I see the damage okay that then goes off here ah oh, these are the uh, clips that hold the uh, voltage regulators on you can see they're all rusted okay well, we can basically see where the damage is so to fix this we're gonna have to remove at least this socket maybe this one and then effectively look at all these tracks where they're going we do have a schematic and fix any broken ones okay so let's see if we can actually get this connector off the board without damaging anything else best way to do this is probably not to do it yeah <laughs> best way is not to do it but it's gonna to have to come off so this is where the broken track was under here somewhere previously that I repaired and that's no doubt related to this damage we can see with these tracks yeah okay this is the one so now having decided we won't do it the best way we'll we'll actually do it well, let's see. Leaded solder. Okay. I will then clear this off with 
desoldering braid, put more wedded solder on. I might actually try just to pull this out. Yeah, if I can get all the pins hot enough, or I'll use hot air to warm this side. So, first of all, let's get rid of as much of the original uh, wedge free solder as we can. Okay. I've got to throw some of them pins actually pushed into the board. So, I must have quite a lot of heat in it. Okay, it's coming off. Well, the solder's coming off. It's going on the other side. Yeah. So I'm basically cleaning off as much as I can. Okay. And then the other side. Okay. It's definitely coming clear. So what I'm going to do now, because I have it, I will try the vacuum desoldering tool. So I added fresh wedded solder because it has a better fluidity and lower melting points and I'm going to try the vacuum on it possibly with the addition of some hot air let's see if it'll come off I'll just I won't tempt fate I will warm the area a little bit first to give it a chance okay Okay, just gently. Don't want to get too much heat into it. Okay. Well that side looks good, let's just put the cleaner through the thing, I don't think it is actually clogged but let's just make sure and then we'll do the other side. So it wasn't clogged but it was a little bit tight. Okay, let's go again, the other side of it. Okay. Okay guys, if I've done that right, it should just come out, but I'm just going to let it cool down a little bit so that the pins don't effectively pull out of the socket because the plastic's hot. It gives me a chance to clean this while I'm waiting. Okay. Right, with a bit of luck, that will just come out. Uh, how about that? Okay guys, so that's how to do that sort of desoldering work. And yes, it helps to have the correct tools. In fact, I would say that without the correct tools, you're unlikely to be able to do it. You may be able to do it without the soldering vacuum by effectively removing as much solder as you can putting fresh leaded solder on clamping this in a vise which you've probably seen me do on other videos and then hot air from behind and pull it out but the chances are because you're getting the pin so hot you'll effectively move the plastic and leave some of the pins in there that's nice guys yeah
that's pretty level okay so we can see now in actual fact the damage wasn't underneath there let's look at the microscope so we can see actually now the damage isn't underneath the socket but it was well worth having a look but what we can do is see where our actual voltage rail goes to which is here okay now we need to find that on the schematic because it's possible there is, a, is or was a short somewhere that caused us to blow up effectively in the first place yeah let's have a look so measuring to ground there's a chassis connection on the board from the 10 ohm resistor well there's no short circuit there i'll put it onto ohms range yeah it's high resistance but it's possible that whatever was connected to the connector here which is uh, connector 4 pin 1 may have a short on it easiest way to check that to be quite honest is probably wait till i fix the problem and then we can check the connector on the actual chassis and make sure there is no short from there yeah that's probably the best way to do it it's quite possible the short is the other side of the ribbon cable whatever it connects to okay so i think we can probably start to repair this now 